a floating rate node, often known as a floater. So a floater pays a regular interest payment periodically uh, based on a certain benchmark interest rate plus a quoted margin. A typical floater pays a, a coupon rate of, say, for example, a six month LIBOR plus 3%. So this six month LIBOR uh, floats usually. So the coupon is paid every six months and uh, the 3% is added quoted margin. This is mainly because of the uh, credit and liquidity risk of the uh, borrower. So this 3% um, quoted margin, whether depends on the credit risk, liquidity risk and any other idiosyncratic risk of the borrower. So once this uh, quoted margin is set, this does not change over the life of the bond. Uh, so the note, the coupon rate changes only because of the six month LIBOR. For example, if you issue a bond today uh, at time zero, six months later, and today is the, say for example, six month LIBOR rate, if today is 1%, then six months later, the rate will be 1% plus 3%, which is equals to 4%. On that day, it is, we all usually call it a coupon reset day. On that day, we will see whether the six month LIBOR rate uh, changed it or not. If the six month LIBOR rate changed to, for example, 1.2%, then at the end of 12 uh, months, the coupon rate will be 1.2% plus three equals to 4.2%. If the LIBOR rate at month 12 is, for example, 0.8%, then on 18 months, the coupon payment will be 0.8% plus 3% is equal to 3.8%. So you can see as the coupon rate changes, uh, as the um, benchmark rate changes, the coupon rate changes. So the coupon rate flows according to the benchmark and benchmark typically can be a LIBOR, can be treasury bill, can be uh, even some index like CPI index as well. Uh, if it is a CPI index, in that case, we often call it inflation protected securities. And the, the, main, uh, the main concept is and the coupon payment changes based on a certain formula. And in floating rate node, there can be a cap uh, and there can be a floor. So if a floating rate node is issued with a cap, for example, 4%, and if LIBOR rate is 1.4%, and quoted interest, quoted margin is 3%, then according to the formula, it should be 4.5%. But since there is a cap of 4%, uh, highest coupon payment cannot be more than four. So in that case, uh, the coupon payment will be four. So a cap is a benefit to an uh, issuer. So whenever a coupon a floating net bond uh, issued with a cap, it is a benefit to the uh, issuer. So a normal floating rate note without a cap uh, should be traded at higher price compared to a similar risky floating rate note with um, a cap because a cap is a benefit to the issuer. So there should be um, uh, some risk of uh, investors because if, even if their rate rates increases, the coupon rate cannot rise more than 4%. Similarly, there can be a floor. For example, if a floor is 3.5%, LIBOR rate is 0.3% and quoted margin is 3%, then the according to the formula, the rate will be 3.3. But since there is a floor of 3.5%, uh, so uh, the coupon payment will be 3. And 5%. So a floor is the benefit to the investor. Uh, so whenever an investor buys a floating rate bond with a floor, uh, he's being um, ensured that his coupon payment will not be lower than 3.5%. Obviously, if it's a corporate borrower, there will be some credit risk as well. So when, and that credit risk can increase or decrease. And often, um, if the credit risk increase or decrease, this quoted margin of 3% doesn't change. So bonds price has to be you know, reflected based on the changes in trade risk and changes in the required rate of return. So this is the basics about uh, the floating rate note. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to knock us.